Welcome, friends, to this great day of the Bandara of Great Master Hazur Maharaj Baba Sawan Singh Ji, my master. On 2nd of April 1948, Hazur Maharaj Baba Sawan Singh Ji gave up his physical body but manifested himself in his radiant form to thousands of the disciples he had initiated. Even those who could not see the radiant form during his lifetime were able to see and became sure that the Master had never died for them. Great Master did indicate to us that although those who have seen him will have him forever, but those who have not seen him physically will have to search for another perfect living master. Because it is only with a living perfect living master, one who is alive in flesh, like us, that we can get true initiation and true discovery 
to the road to our own true home. Therefore, although we were very lucky, so many of us, to have his initiation while he was still alive, his power and his presence continues till today with those who were initiated by him. It's very interesting to remember how he was asked by his own master, Baba Jamal Singh, who was an initiate of Swami Shivdyal Singh Seth from Agra, how he was initiated and how he became a successor to the great master, who was his own master, Baba Jamal Singh. Fourteen people were present when Baba Jamal Singh asked Baba Savan Singh, great master, to carry on the work that he was doing in the Dera on the river bank of the river Bias in India. Baba Savan Singh was at that time working for the government of Punjab in the buildings and roads branch of the Public Works Department as a subdivisional engineer. And he said to Babaji, amongst 14 of us sitting around you, there are more competent people, people who have achieved more in their meditation, and therefore why don't you ask one of them to do this work? And Baba Jamal Singh said, let me check with my own master. That has always been the tradition amongst perfect living masters. They never take credit for anything upon themselves. Whenever they have to perform miracles, they attribute them to their own masters. This is an old tradition among masters. Therefore, Baba Jamal Singh said, let me check with Swamiji. So he closed his eyes. And after a few minutes, he opened his eyes. And he said, there is a new moj, a new playful will has been discovered. And Baba Savan Singh said, what is that moj? And he said, the moj is that Swamiji says only Savan Singh will carry on this work. Whereupon Baba Savan Singh said, you know, Master, I am a working engineer. I have a very small pension with which I will be retiring. How will I be able to take care of so many people you are saying will be coming to this Dera in the future? Upon that, Baba Jamal Singh said, let me check that one too. <laughs> so he closed his eyes. And then he opened his eyes. And he said, new Moj has come. And Baba Savan Singh said, what is the Moj now? He said, the Moj is that you will not have to spend money from your pension. People will give you donations and bring food and money, enough for them to be fed and to take care of themselves. You will not even have to feed them. And they will bring so much that even if the whole Brahmand comes down to eat in your langar, there will be enough food. Upon that, Baba Savan Singh said, but Master, I have one more question. And Baba Jamal Singh said, what is the new question you have? He said, being a government officer and an officer who is provided accommodation by the state government, I live in a nice bungalow. And you are living in a little hut here, Babaji. <laughs> Would you expect me now to move into a little hut to carry on your work? And Baba Jamal Singh said, let me check that one too. <laughs> so he closed his eyes. And after a while he opened his eyes. And he said, new Moj has come. And Baba Savan Singh said, what is the new Moj? He said, new Moj is that Swamiji says, Baba Savan Singh will not have to live in the same hut in which Jamal Singh is living. That he will have a house not less spacious then the house he is living in now as a subdivisional engineer. After that, 
Baba Saul Singh said, I have one more question. <laughs> and Baba Jamal Singh said, what is your new question now? He said, my question is that you tell people that once you are initiated by a perfect living master, they will not come again into this world more than four lifetimes. This means if I initiate people, then I will be required to come back with them four times. I am myself trying to get rid of this life and go back to this life. You want me to come again and again for the sake of my disciples. <laughs> and Baba Jamal Singh said, let me check that one too. <laughs> and he closed his eyes. And after a while he opened his eyes and he said, Savan Singh, the hukam is, the moj is, that whoever you will initiate will never have to come back into second life again. After that, Baba Sahabal Singh said, I will carry out your orders, sir. I am telling you, my master was a very clever guy. <laughs> he got all his conditions fulfilled before he started this work. It is the bandara of that master. It is a great day. It's a day of abundance. Bandar means abundance. And Bandara means celebration of that abundance. And what are we having? We are having abundance of grace, abundance of blessings, abundance of that opportunity that these masters give us once in a while, when we can soak ourselves with their love and with their blessings. Today is that day. And I really want all of you present here to join me in this Bandara to take full advantage of this opportunity today to soak in all the blessings that are available today. And I will have a special meditation sessions with you. I'll meditate with you so that we can take advantage of this wonderful opportunity and get the blessings of the great master's power. I know you can't see him. I know you, he can't even help you because he is not a living master anymore. But when I speak to you, I do not speak from my power at all. It's entirely from the power of the great master, Harun Maharaj Baba Sawan Singh. He is the doer of all things that I am doing. He is responsible for all things that I do here. I am just carrying out his hukam, his orders. I am just a sevadar, doing service to my master. You might think, I have come to help you guys. I am helping myself. <laughs> I am a bit selfish that way. I am doing this seva for my master, not for you. Though it looks like I might be doing it for you. But the truth is, it is all an opportunity he has given me to do this work for him. And I am very cheerfully, gladly doing it. And I do not distinguish between any kind of seva a master gives us from any other kind that he gives. When I was young, a small boy, this high, we had no electric power in the dera, so we used to fan him with a big fan. And normally, taller adults used to do the fanning. And I once asked, I can do the fan? And they said, no, you are too young. A great master was sitting. He said, no, he can do it. So I took the fan. It was my size. And I was doing like this. I can still today recall what a great joy it was for me to be able to do this seva of fanning my master. Today, the seva I am doing today is identical to that. I get the same joy in doing seva service to my master. My master once told me, that if you do service to your master, it counts as good as meditation. I said, this is the best shortcut I ever heard of. <laughs> it's so hard to meditate. The mind runs amok all the time. And we can't sit for a little while behind the eyes. And here he's saying, there's a shortcut, another way available. Do selfless seva. But the seva must be done without expecting a reward. 
it must be done as an offering what is seva it's an offering it's an offering of help it's an offering of any kind seva is of three kinds and we can do all that kind of seva we can do seva with the body like i was fanning the master seva with the body i can carry master's bags and luggage i can help master to put on his shoes i can help master i can open the door for him to get into the car i could do lots of things they were all bodily seva they all are equal no one seva is better than the other seva is an offering of your service to the master the second kind of seva which is easier really is to donate some money to write a check and that's also seva it's seva with your wealth seva with the body seva with your wealth but the most important seva is seva with your mind and seva with mind means that when you meditate you do not meditate for yourself but as an offering to your master most of the time we are doing meditation for our own self to get realization to get experiences we meditate so we'll get something have you ever thought that the same meditation can also be offered to the master as seva and that is seva with the mind so when we meditate master today's seva is today's meditation is not for me to get anything it's offering to you so i can offer you my seva with my body with my wealth and with my mind and therefore this seva helps how does it help us so much because seva without expecting a reward again like love pushes our ego behind and that is why seva is recommended as something so important and do if you cannot serve the master himself then you can serve his disciples and if you can't serve his disciples they are not there serve anybody save humanity save of any kind is good no matter where it is done it's very high quality if it can be done without expecting a reward according to lord krishna as expressed by him in his gita his conversation with arjun in the battlefield of kurukshetra krishna says that when you act without expecting a reward you become a yogi that if you are continuously doing things expecting what will i get for it then you are an ordinary person you are not enlightened but if you can any perform any action and it should be performed skillfully he says yoga karmasu kaushalam that means if your action is performed with the utmost skill that you have with the best skill you are performing an action without regard to what you are getting back for it you will become enlightened you will become a yogi you will discover your true self of course he descri- describes other forms of yoga too this is yoga of action he also describes yoga of knowledge gyan yoga or sankhya yoga where krishna tells arjun that if you think about what is reality and keep on thinking you will reach a point where you find thinking can give you nothing and when you reach that point and cross it you will get enlightened but he says the highest yoga is bhakti yoga which means yoga of love and devotion because if your love and devotion is expands you can go even beyond these two other yogas and go beyond the mind so these are all talking about actions without expecting a reward so when we offer seva it should be done purely as an offering without expecting reward and then it carries a huge reward but let not your mind fool you okay i know there will be a big reward afterwards and now let me do seva say i don't want any reward and you expect it now what will come next you can't do cheating in this game you can do cheating elsewhere but not in this game so that is why i am only mentioning to you why we are gathered here because i have celebrated this day since 1949 the year after the the year that he passed away and i have not missed this day 
whether I am alone. Somebody told me, supposing nobody is there at Bandara, how will you celebrate it? I said, it has never happened that there was nobody. Two were always there, me and my master. So we always celebrate Bandara together. So I am not alone ever celebrating Bandara. But I am very happy that all of you came and joined me today in this Bandara. A day of abundance, a day of great. The very fact that we have got human bodies, the very fact that we have free will, the experience of free will, the very fact that we can make choices today, the very fact that we can become seekers today, is the greatest blessing we have, that we can seek the truth and find it. And that is why, as human beings with the capacity to seek, we have an opportunity to seek. And we have also an opportunity to find something that is the most valuable thing in the world, that is to be found by a perfect living master and get initiated in this lifetime, in the lifetime of the perfect living master, do little bit of homework and manifest the radiant form of the master which will stay with us forever. And when I say forever, I don't mean forever while we are alive here, forever into eternity. That's an amazing experience that you can have a relationship with a human being. This is totally a relationship with a living human being like yourself. And that relationship can be so permanent a friendship and so permanent a companionship that it lasts forever. You're never alone after that. It's a very amazing experience. And I know no other experience like that. That is why when we get this opportunity, there's nothing like it. How many of you would now like to join me in meditation so that you get the benefit of these blessings? Thank you very much. So many of you are participating in this joint meditation today to take the best advantage of today's Bandara. Please close your eyes. Seat yourself on your chairs or on the ground where you're sitting in such a way that you don't have to move after this. You can be still for a while. Close your eyes. Imagine that your body is your house in which you live. Imagine you are living in the sixth floor of this house behind the eyes. Imagine the space that is there. Imagine you are in the center of that room on the sixth floor of your house behind the eyes. Take a comfortable chair or a comfortable mat and sit down on the chair or on the floor. Do your meditation there. Repeat any mantra you know, any simran you know. Repeat very slowly. Repeat very slowly. Look around if you see the master anywhere. Ask for the master's blessings. Great Master distributing his grace and blessings. Receive them. Receive them with abundance. Open yourself. See how the Master is giving you the grace. Open to receiving the grace. Express your love and gratitude. Express your thanks.
Keep your eyes closed till I count five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Welcome back. How many of you were able to actually enjoy receive the blessings? I'm very happy. Very congratulations. I'm very happy. The master's teachings of all masters, all perfect living masters, teach us the same thing. That our true home, our such khand, our truth lies within ourselves and not outside. If we have to find it, we must go within ourselves. Running around outside does not give you anything. It only tires you out, develops your ego. I have gone to all the places of, places of pilgrimage. I have done so much. It only enhances your ego. Reading books can give you information. Reading books can never give you enlightenment. You can keep on reading as much as you like. We think the reading of scriptures is going to take us to heaven, going to take us to enlightenment. How can reading of ordinary words printed on paper take us anywhere? If you want to read, read what is written inside you. Bullesha mystic says, we just keep on reading, keep on reading. We go outside to learn. And nobody enters himself to learn what is inside. The true writing that you want to see is inside, not outside. Outside is the description of what you can find inside. If we keep on reading about a place which we like, there is a nice Hawaiian beach. They call it paradise. Waikiki beach. Beautiful place. And we get a whole book describing that beach. Every day we read it. Every day we enjoy. We have not reached Waikiki Beach. Nobody can reach there just by reading a book. In Guru Granth Sahib, the holy book of Granth of the Sikhs, it says, Padhiye jete arja, padhiye jete maas, padhiye dete bars bars, padhiye dete swas. If you keep on reading every month, if you keep on reading every year, if you keep on reading every day, if you keep on reading with every breath, Nanak lekha ek gal hor hume chas. The truth lies in one thing, the rest is only develop your own home, your ego. I have read so much. I have done this reading so many times. Does it change you? Does reading change you? No, if you act upon what it is saying. The same Granth says, you can know Sadguru, who is he, who shows you his true home within this home, which is our, our body. And yet, with so many of us keep on reading all the scriptures again and again, again and again. We sing hymns, we sing songs, chanting. They are great, but they are not going to enlighten us. They are the way to get enlightened by reading and following them. If we don't follow them, what good is just reading? And sometimes we don't even read. We let somebody else read. And we think we are benefiting because somebody else is reading. Somebody else reads the scriptures and we sit there, we think we are getting the benefit of it. If you listen, what they are reading, act upon it and do it, then you get the benefit. The truth lies by an exploration of yourself. To discover the truth, to discover who you are, to discover the ultimate creator, you do not require religion. You require spirituality. All religions were created out of spirituality, out of spiritual truths. The founders of the religion made very clear statements that the truth lies inside. Go within and find out. The same spiritual truths are now being practiced by us through religion, by outside ceremonies, outside prayers, 
outside readings, outside distribution of sweets, outside distribution of everything. What about going within? Who goes within? You go to any temple, any church, any gurdwara, any synagogue. What are we doing there? We, all, all activities are all external, outside. And yet, all these masters, in whose names we have founded these religions, they are saying the same thing, go within to find the truth. Therefore, unless we go within, we will not find what those books are saying. If you go within, you will know what the books mean. Otherwise, we fight over the interpretation of the books that we are reading. No, this means this. No, this means that. Intellectual discussions are taking place and we are not taking any advantage of what the book is saying and advising us to do. To go within means to go within your own consciousness. To go within to the point where you as conscious unit, as a living thing, exist within the body. This is merely a cover upon ourselves. This is not ourselves. It's a temporary costume just to participate in one small show here. We are good actors. You will notice that when we go to see a play, if it's a cheap sides street show, there is no stage, there is no proper stage setting, the actors are not wearing good costumes, they are very poor actors, and, and they act very crudely, so we can give them a quarter and see the show. Then you go to Broadway, New York, or go to a bigger place, $150 ticket to go in. What's the difference? Those actors act as if it is real. That act is great, where the actor acts as if it is real and not an act. A movie was also produced called Gandhi on the life of Mahatma Gandhi of India. Ben Kingsley of England, a British citizen, acted as Gandhi. In an interview he said, when the cameraman wanted to shoot the movie, he told them, hold, I don't feel I am Gandhi. For three months, day and night, he thought he was Gandhi. Till he began to believe he was Gandhi. Then he told the people, shoot the film now. In order to be good actors, you should forget you are an actor. Now imagine, this world is a stage. Even Shakespeare, the dramatist said so. This world is a stage, we are all actors upon it. And we are such good actors, we have totally forgotten we are actors. What better acting can we do? And the script which we are acting is instilled in us in such a beautiful way that we cannot depart from the script. And yet we believe we are really acting a real life and made it a reality. It's still an act. We are participating in the act as if it is real. Can we at any time, by your awareness, by your spiritual awareness, cease an act in a movie or a drama and not real? Yes, you can. By withdrawing yourself from becoming a character in this show to becoming an audience, to taking a seat in the audience, when we go and watch a movie, we forget it is unreal, just a shadow on the screen. For the time being, we take it as real. We wonder what will happen next. I tell you jokingly the story of the young boy from the village in India who had never seen a movie, never knew there was a theater. And we took him to a cinema hall and there he saw a movie in which there was a scene in which a girl takes off her clothes to jump into a pond to have a bath. And he gets very excited to see the girl is going to take off her clothes and he'll see her nude. But as she takes the clothes off, a train passes in front. And by the time the train goes, he's already in the water. That young boy came 20 times to the movie. Same movie to wait when the train will get late one day. We watch this movie the same way. We take it equally real. 
when we watch a movie we forget that it is not real the greek philosopher aristotle described this as a deliberate way for human psyche to get rid of excess of emotions to consider a play as real he says why do we cry when we watch a movie or a drama we know they are acting at that time we don't think they are acting he calls it a willing suspension of disbelief that we willingly suspend our disbelief normally we won't believe it's real we willingly suspend this in order to what he calls a catharsis of emotions to get purgation of excess of our emotions and become stable that otherwise we are such emotional beings that this drama that we go through is an outlet for us for our emotions this life is the same thing and we are taking it as real so that we can get ex excess of our emotions drawn we can be cool and we can know who we are and be stable so that is why if you want to see this whole world as a as an act as a movie as a play going on around you jump from the character in which you are sitting and thinking you are that character alone which is the name given to your physical body that's the character normally in a movie theater you don't sit in any character you sit away from it so you know the audience is in a separate seat characters are on the screen and you're not part of them in this movie you are sitting in one of the characters your chair from which you watch this movie has been placed inside one of the characters but when you think you are a character it becomes a real world when you sit back on the chair and watch the movie it becomes a movie where is that chair from where you are watching this movie behind your eyes inside when i led you through little meditation i said sit in this house which was this body behind the eyes because when you sit behind the eyes you are sitting where you are actually as consciousness observing the show by sitting in one of the characters if you are aware that that's where you are sitting and with your eyes open you are watching the show including the show which includes your body as a character this whole world will become a movie in an instant and you will enjoy it like a movie it's just a question of awareness if you put your awareness in the seat behind the eyes you don't participate the characters are moving including the character in the under which in which you are sitting they are participating in the show you are sitting still in the audience behind the eyes watching the show from there i am not talking of a long journey to our true home to satchkhand i am talking to the very first step of just pulling your attention to behind the eyes and sitting there and watching this movie constantly being aware that i am not the body body is a character in the movie and so are the other body that i see around and all that is happening is a show i am sitting there still in my chair watching the whole life becomes a movie which indeed it is of course you can't find it when you are sitting here as a character and not knowing who you are but if you find out who you are you will know it actually is a movie it was pre recorded like a movie it is being played out like a movie when you see a movie on the screen where does it come from you think it's happening at that time you wonder what that character will do next whether that person will be run away or not whether a murder will take place or not horrible things you are watching on the movie you don't run from your chair to go and stop it on one hand you know it is not real on the other hand you want to believe it is real and that's why you want to enjoy it but have you ever thought that the movie was shot the film was made way earlier it's packed up in a film and is being projected on the screen from behind you not from front that the projector is behind you the movie consists of still shots it's moving fast to make it look like it is moving 
and unless there was a light behind this going through the film you would never see that shadow is the light that's putting through the film is going on the screen you see a movie this world is identical to that the light of our soul our consciousness goes pierces through the film pre recorded in the mind and creates this experience outside the fact that it creates experience in multi dimensions does not make less of a projection from consciousness on a pre recorded movie in the mind the whole destiny we are going through the whole life we are going through is totally pre recorded but how can you find this truth well the truth in the movie can be just turn around and look back the truth about this movie is just turn around and look back look within does the mind have all these pictures already programmed look back is the light of your own self of your own soul projecting it through the mind and creating this check it out you will find there is no difference and yet when we identify ourselves with just the characters of the movie we forget this we suffer and we enjoy along with the characters of the movie then we make it a real world of course not a bad idea if you want to enjoy a movie it should look real and that's why it is real and it's a great adventure it's not all fun there's suffering there's pleasure there's pain we have all these things we have ups and downs if there were no ups and downs would be very boring movie we wouldn't like to stay here any more so it's a great movie which we are watching pre shot and pre recorded right inside not only that just by going back behind the projector and taking the film out you can load another movie as you will find that there were trillions of movies available to you to load you pick this one up and loaded it and are watching it when it's done you load another one and keep on watching is just a fairy tale i'm telling you or is it a verifiable truth if you are a meditator if you are used to withdrawing your attention behind the eyes and going within you'll find it's a verifiable truth and anybody can verify it's not a top secret somewhere it's transparent that this thing can be verified by anybody who goes within but if we don't go within and just sit outside and talk about it there is no verification possible there is no proof of it outside when we are living as a character in this big show it is a big show generated by us for our purpose when the movie is over we go home we don't bother about what happened to the characters when the show ends we go back home when this show will end we'll go back home but we can also go back home in the middle of the show at least that will give us a feeling that we always have the chance to go back when we like the best thing in life can be when you can make a trip into adventure when you like and go back home when you like and your own sweet will and that is what initiation by a perfect living master provides for us because that is the way he can provide means to us to go within go and find out our true home and go back into the several levels of creation several levels of consciousness that have been created outside which we are experiencing now such is the wonder of this kind of a journey then we have different levels of curiosity some people are curious some are not so curious some are just taking it for granted let things move on as they are they drift along some are curious to know more this sense of curiosity also applies when you are doing meditation and discovering things there is such a variety of experiences available to us at the very first level when you withdraw your attention and are no longer aware of this body but you are aware of your inner body only there's so many adventures of a more interesting kind than this physical adventure that open to you curious people stay there for thousands of years even after getting initiated from a perfect living master 
but the perfect living master never leaves them he says yes have a good time enjoy and one big difference between certain doctrines that are telling us this world is not real and the teachings of perfect living masters one big difference is the masters don't say we are sitting in hell run out of it go somewhere they say discover the truth this very hell can become heaven they don't say you to run away anywhere they don't say enlightenment comes by running into forests or giving up everything the surrender should be surrender of the mind within your own head outside surrender means nothing i have traveled in some very remote areas in india and elsewhere and seen people who who are doing meditation up in the mountains of himalayas i i was working there on jobs and i have seen them in the forests of dandakarnia remote forests where there were no pathways where people have to walk on stilts because there is nothing there are snakes and bushes all around i walked on stilts too but the two people helped me lest they fall amongst the snakes i have seen those places and i have seen people who have run away from society in order to go to these forests and to these mountains in order to get enlightenment and all they talk about when you talk to them is what they left behind they have not left anything behind it's full of it is all in their mind if you if you like pizza back to shake his pizza <laughs> if you like pizza and you eat it you enjoy it but if you go away into the forest and you can't get pizza there will you be able to meditate your mind every time you say oh i left pizza behind by running away physically does not give you any chance for meditation or enlightenment and yet we think if we run away somewhere we'll be able to get something people who run away have got nothing they had to come back therefore what we have to find is where we are what we are doing just like a lotus flower a lotus flower is in the water the roots are in the dirt but the flower remains pure and above we should stay where we are but our awareness should be above all this so that we are aware of who we are why we are here what we are doing here it's all an opening of higher awareness it's an opening of real knowledge of who we are and how we can do things very well in this world to be a good meditator to get enlightenment you do not have to leave any of your activities you are doing here you can do your jobs very well you can have families you can take care of your children you can take care of your friends you can take care of society you can do anything you like and still raise your awareness and know this is a light show in which you are participating higher awareness has nothing to do with these things you can live both equally well the outward life of this we live in this world is not going to be affected by your higher awareness of knowing who you are therefore to run away from things is not necessary at all we don't have to run away this is one of the big thing that i learned from great masters teachings whose bandara we are celebrating today that we can perform all our functions i did all kind of jobs myself i worked in a private company i worked for the government i did business where i came to this country to make money in all these three i was successful because they had nothing to do with my enlightenment or my master sitting inside and guiding me or helping me the two things are not clashing at all in fact i was on jobs in india where people thought that to sit on that chair gives you a lot of power 
they call it that this is kissa kursi ka that's all a matter of the chair you sit on that a dumb fellow can be put on that chair he becomes wise those kind of jobs and yet in spite of those people thought once you sit on that chair for example they told me you can never be a businessman because of those chairs of authority like secretary of a department of government or head of a department or a commissioner of a division then you are holding those positions which i did hold you are always right the officer who sits on this chair is always right in business the customer is always right they say you can't do both things i did both things when i did that i was right when i did business customer was right where is the problem so long as you know this is merely an act this is merely a life that we are living through like an act on a play it's just a play and your awareness is beyond that the awareness is watching the play you are best able to live life if you say you are watching this play from behind the eyes in a comfortable chair and that's the place where you become an audience where the world becomes a spectacle a show for you and that simple exercise should not be difficult we did a little bit just now in the meditation session if you can just practice that and i am not saying that you have to spend your life on that lead your life 5 minutes in the morning get up first thing 5 minutes in the morning and sit inside there and look at the world from there 5 minutes at night before you go to sleep sit there and imagine what the world look like when you spend the whole day here and have wonderful dreams spend 5 minutes morning 5 minutes night you are on the way to enlightenment but if continuously you say no i'll do it tomorrow i'll do it uh, when i'm free i'll do it when i retire this is too much at this time i'm too busy i'm too busy with the chores of this world i can't do it then you miss the bus because the thing is that a momentum is created when you constantly visit the space in which the truth is held which is inside you if you don't even visit it you forget about it then you're drowned in the affairs of the world the truth is if we want to really be a spiritual person live a spiritual life we must change our priorities our priority number 1 should be the spiritual life and to sit inside at least in the morning when we get up and when we go to sleep priority number 1 no matter what no matter what's going to happen everything can wait if you make that your priority you'll be building a momentum towards your own spiritual growth and discover new things but if your priority is no i am very busy i have so many commitments here there and i'll do this this is secondary i'll do it tomorrow it never works and nor is it good to say i do good meditation on weekends or once a month you lose all momentum you start all over again every time but 5 minutes daily maintains the momentum and you keep on making progress this is a question of setting up priorities and i am saying this from my experience that i have seen all sides of this that if we give priority to to be who we really are a spiritual being we are not people who can find spirituality we are spiritual beings who happen to be here temporarily and if we can recognize that every day we will keep the awareness at that level the great master's teachings were as good as simple as anybody any other perfect living master's teachings why they impacted me so much and transformed my life to such an extent is not really because of the teachings but because of the unconditional pure love that i experienced there is no match for that the friendship that you get from a perfect living master there is no match for that i have seen nothing like that we had a doctor veterinary doctor 
His name was Dr. Ishar Singh, and he was living in a small state called Kapoorthala, but 20 miles away from the Dera where Great Master lived. And he had many experiences. He is the guy who had to break his arm before he was get, getting initiated. You have heard that story. He is the guy who tied up his father in a rope to get his darshan from the master. He did all kinds of crazy things. He was a crazy guy. I spent many years with that guy. He was crazy. He could drive me crazy. <laughs> and yet that guy, he invited great master. He said, Master, you do all your work here. Why don't you come to Kapoorthala? Visit my town. Visit my home. You will bless my home with your presence. And great master agreed. The very first trip he ever made outside of the Dera was to the house of Ishar Singh. But when Ishar Singh made the arrangement, he, was, he had a very small little, small house. It was so small, it's just one room and little courtyard outside. And it was right in the beginning when you enter Kapoorthala city, it's right in the beginning on a lane. You go right lane and there was the little house. And there were cows and there were other animals that were tied up in that courtyard. It was a normal village type of life. And he, when Great Master accepted his invitation, he got all the sevadars, all the satsangis gathered. Let's clean up the place. Master is coming. So they cleaned up. They pushed the cows out and they pushed the buffaloes out. And they began to clean that place. Great Master is going to come and people will sit here and have satsang, a discourse. There were two more affluent disciples of Great Master. One was a professor in Kapoorthala. They both passed away, I can take their name, Professor Bhatnagar. And there was the judge, and who was finance secretary of Kapoorthala, Dariyai Lal. These two people had big houses. They had cars. He said he had no car. He had a horse and he had a bike. So he borrowed, he requested them to use their car to bring the great master from Bias Dera up to Kapoorthala. And he made all the preparations, told all the satsangis, Master is coming. And Master drove in one of the cars, accompanied by these two rich people, the tycoons of Kapoorthala. And when the Master's car came, all the satsangis were waiting near that lane, which turned into Ishwar Singh's house. And the car never stopped there. It went right ahead, bypassed them and stopped at the house of Professor Bhatnagar. And Professor Bhatnagar said that, Master, we have arranged a special bedroom for you, made special arrangements, there is a bathroom attached, we have all the arrangements for you, we have dining arrangements for you, and you come. Shall we take your bags out? He said, no, leave the bags in the car. And he said, keep in the bag. So they thought, he wants to stay in the Riyalal's house. So they all got back into the car and they drove to the Riyalal's house. Meantime, the satsangis told Ishar Singh, you are so stupid, didn't you realize that there is no place for a master to stay? Where you are preparing, making us all clean up the place. He is going to stay with one of those people. He is already gone. And he is going to give darshan to people. He is going to give a discourse also on the other side of the town. In the big, in the big medhan there, the big lawn, there open ground there. As you are sitting here, wasting our time and wasting your time, masters coming to my house. How can he come to this one room in which you live? They said, no, he told me he will come. They said, you are a fool. And they left him to run to the place where the discourse was going to take place. Meantime, master's car reached the Rayalal's house. And there... They said, Master, we have prepared for your bedroom here. We have prepared dining arrangements for you. We have done the identical arrangements the professor has done. You choose. You can stay here. Shall we take your bags out? 
He said, leave the bags in the car. They said, Master, these are the only two appropriate places for you to stay. He says, but I told Ishar Singh that I will come to his house. The Master, he has no house. He has only one room and a dirty courtyard outside. And there's no bathroom. He said, no bathroom? How does he take a bath? <laughs> they say he carries a bucket of water and takes it by a staircase on the side and puts it at the top of the roof and it just with a little, uh, 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 little cup or something, he just puts the water on his head and that's his bath. There's no proper arrangement there. Great Master says, maybe I can also go on top of his room <laughs> and have a bath there. He says, Master, no, there's no place for you to stay. Meantime, nobody is there around Ishtar Singh. Everybody is gone. His wife, Maya, said, you have always been a mad fellow and following a master without knowledge, and she also ran away to help. <laughs> Poor fellow, alone, locked himself in this room and cried. <coughs> Tears flowing. Master, what kind of master are you? You promise you'll come to my house. And just because those people are rich, those people have big bungalows, and they can affect you, you're driving in their car, therefore you've forgotten me. What kind of friend are you? You said you are a friend of mine and not a master. Master first. No, friend first, master later. You kept on saying, I took you as a friend. Is that how a friend does to a person? And he kept on crying. Meanwhile, master said to the Ailag, that poor fellow, Ishar Singh, is waiting for me. It doesn't matter what kind of accommodation he has. It's just a matter of one or two days. I'll be able to stay there. Satsangi trying to call him. He said, go away. I don't want to go. Let masters betray me. Not a friend. <laughs> then master spoke. He said, Ishar Singh, this is Savan Singh standing outside. And he opened the door. And Master saw all tears. Master had tears in his eyes. And he hugged him. And he said, Ishar Singh, I am your friend. When I promise, I deliver. When I say something, I mean it. And he cried. they both cried. Inside. Master said, Satsang will be held right here. I will stay in this room here. And for three days, he stayed in the same room. And he had a bath right on the top. And he went for number two, number three, outside. <laughs> like Isar Singh did. And he accommodated himself exactly like Isar Singh. I am giving you the story to tell you the nature of friendship of a perfect living master. When he says something, he delivers. Today people ask me, can you name the perfect living masters that you know? And I said, I can name only one. Great Master Hadur Maharaj Baba Savan Singh. I cannot know anything else about anybody because there may be so many perfect masters. But my attention is fixed on one man and I know he's a perfect living master. They said, how do you know that he's a perfect living master? And this question has not been asked by any ordinary person. This question has been asked by people who follow my master's master's teachings. These are Swamiji's disciples from Agra coming to me and telling me, you are not following a proper master at all because Baba Jamal Singh was never named to be a successor to Swamiji. There is no will showing that. His last words don't include his name. And Jamal Singh was not even initiated. And Savan Singh was twice removed from truth that he had no knowledge at all. And you are following that master? Why don't you come to the right place where we have a whole genealogy, whole uh, wills, will after will, showing who is the master? And I told them, I have never met Baba Jamal Singh. And I have never met Swamiji. I have never met these old masters. I only one man, I met one man whose name was Baba Savan Singh. And he promised something to me and he delivered in full. Is that not my, am I not contented with that? He is a perfect living master because what I read about a perfect living master, what he promised to me, he delivered in full.
That's my only definition of my recognizing a perfect living master. There may be many. But how can I certify anybody else? I am no judge of anybody. Nor is it my duty to, to say who is a master, who is not. I know one master who was perfect living master. The relationship you have with a perfect living master, he delivers what he says. He guarantees what he says. He guarantees he will take you back to your true home and he will not leave you till he takes you back to your true home. Even if you try to run away from him, he'll still catch you and take you back home. <laughs> such is the nature of these perfect living masters. It's the bandara of such a person we are celebrating today. It's not anybody. This is just not a feast. It's a feast, a celebration of somebody about whom I can vouch with 100% certainty that he was a man who could say something and deliver. All the scriptures I have read, and I have done a study at Harvard University on comparative religion and studied 11 religions of the world. All they say about a person who can be like that was found in Baba Savan Singh. And he matched all those. Therefore, I have no question about it. I am, I am so humbled by feeling what great luck I must have had. What a great fortune it must have been to be found by such a person, such a master. When you are found by a perfect living master, it's the greatest event of your life. It alters your course of history from eons. It changes your destiny, which was written up ages ago. And at that one moment, it is changed. It's such an amazing experience to have such a master. How could I express gratitude? I have no words to tell you about the man I'm talking about. His love was so pure. He could be like a child in front of a child. He could play childlike with a child. He could be a wise man with wise people. He could talk law with intellectual lawyers who came to him. And he could be a businessman when he talked of business. And he could be anything with anybody. And yet, his love was so pure. His forgiveness and compassion cannot be matched. He never judged anybody. I watched him very closely for a long time. Once a man came to great master and he said, Master, we were sitting in a place where he used to look after his mail in the evening. And he was, his secretaries were bringing up letters so he could read them and he would dictate what replies to give. So that session was going on of his correspondence with people when a man came running. I used to just sit watch what's going on since I happened to be in the Dera. And I saw that man run to great master. Master, forgive me. You told me not to drink alcohol. Last night I drunk, I got drunk. You told me not to eat meat. Last night I was in bad company. I ate whatever they gave me, a lot of meat. You told me to have a good moral life. Last time there were uh, prostitutes there and you said don't womanize, I did everything. Master, I did everything wrong last night. Please forgive me. And we all start to watch this man talking like that. And Master says, all right, you are forgiven. Don't do it again. And he said, thank you, thank you, thank you. And he ran away. The secretaries of the sitting around the Master got surprised. And they said, one secretary spoke up. He said, Master, this man did everything wrong. And he just said, forgive me and you forgave him. Great Master says, so what should I do? He asked forgiveness, I forgave him. What's wrong with it? But Master, the way you so easily forgave him, he might go and do the same things again. Supposing he does the same things again and comes to you, will you again forgive him? Master said, I think I'll give, again forgive him. Master, when will you punish him? And he said, please, don't make me one of the punishers. Let me remain a forgiver forever. Let me always forgive. That man who came here, he was being punished by his own mind so much. You should have seen 
how much he felt being punished by his own mind. The devil sits inside us, punishing us all the time. The mind was punishing him, and you want me to punish more? I have to forgive. He says, "Let us remain on the side of forgivers. We are forgivers, givers, forgivers, and let us not be on the side of takers or punishers. Perfect living masters are always forgivers, and always they don't have a judgment. When somebody comes up and says, 'Master, look at my life. I have sinned so much. I, my life is horrible.'" I have not followed any good thing in my life. What does the master look at him and say? What does the master's eyes see in that person? He sees a pure soul, unalloyed, unaffected, belonging to the true home, to such kind the soul, Atma, sitting in that person, and he sees there the soul troubled by a mind, full of all the stuff that he is complaining about, and he wants release from that. What will the master's feeling will be? Full of love and compassion for that soul that is so trapped. They won't sit on judgment. A person is already being affected so badly by his own mind, by the devil sitting in his head, and you think masters will come and try to punish them more? Masters know in what state we are. Masters know how this law of karma and this mind and all the method of punishment and reward has trapped us here. and they come with compassion to take us out from here not to judge any further there are too many judges already around us first of all people judge us and we are affected by that our own mind judges us and we feel guilt and we can't forgive ourselves what more do you want a master should also join that and start punishing us or judging us no the master never judges he is totally that's why i say it's such a great experience I had the greatest experience to find the human being exists, a human being whose whole life, whatever I could watch, never judged anybody, never said you are bad. Everybody, everybody's soul was pure and good, trapped by a mind that was bad. We all have the same minds. We all have the same souls. So therefore, these perfect living masters do not come like ordinary people to judge us. to decide whether we are good or bad they are sent a clauses with no judgment and bring bags of gifts that give us freely i think i like the white beard of my master he looked like a real santa claus for me <laughs> i thought he gave me the best gifts i could ever get and he gave gave it in such abundance i could not even hold them i was overloaded with the gifts that this master gave us so that is such a beauty of the band whose bandara we celebrate today i am so happy that so many of you came and joined me in this and i offer you the greatest blessings of the great master may not be visible to you it is visible when i asked you to meditate little while ago he placed his hand on all of your heads and i saw i am a witness to that i cannot tell you the pleasure i get from this kind of generosity and grace that he spreads around and that master power it exists it is always being revealed in a living person a one who is living in our midst one who is a perfect living master in his life when a master passes away in physical body he is gone it's not the physical body that is the master one of the well known masters in history was sheik farid sheik farid shakarkandi he was a master who who before he before he became a master was a follower of sheik qutbuddin and he wanted his son also to be initiated by sheik qutbuddin farid told his son son master is gone old and the human body doesn't last forever better not lose this opportunity go and get initiated because once the master dies you will not be able to get anything and the son said dad you know i am young i have to still do various things you know what various things young people do <laughs> and he was saying no i have got time i'll wait for it 
He said, there may be no time. The master is old. Kutbuddin is in his late 80s. What do you think? He is not going to live here forever. The son didn't listen. One day, Kutbuddin died. And the son heard, Kutbuddin had died. And his body is lying there to be put in the grave. He ran. He shaved his head off, which was customary to get initiation. And with his bald head, he put his head on the feet of the dead body of Kutbuddin. Watching that, Farid says, Son, this is the body of a person I have the highest love and regard. I know nobody in the world for whom I had more respect. And yet I tell you, you are getting nothing out of him. This is just a corpse, just a dead body. Master has left. Sorry. You missed it. Even one minute is too late. If a master leaves his body, you haven't had the chance to hold his hand. And then Farid says, only if you can hold the hand of a perfect living master while he's alive, do you get the benefits we are talking about? And not that somebody died and you say, I believe in him and therefore he'll give you anything. Then you believe in your mind. If there is nobody to tell you, whether it's your mind or your master talking, how do you know who is talking in your head? It's always the mind. Make no mistake. There's no inspiration telling us that somebody else is speaking. All speech in our head is from our own mind. Therefore, are we following our mind or are we following a master? But when there's a human being alive in front of us and we think master speaking, he can say, no, that's not it. When he's dead, he can't say that. And we live with, a, with worshiping our own minds. That is why it's important. If we are lucky and we are seekers, and a master comes our way, do not lose that opportunity. Because he's not there in flesh all the time. And time runs. Therefore, it's the greatest opportunity one can have. If one is able to find a perfect living master, or a master appears in his life, and you are a seeker, a seeker of your true home, don't miss the bus. That's the time you should not Dilly dally at all, not to wait for anything. Great master has gone in his body. He can't help anybody. I keep on talking of great master. And I know for me he is alive. For others who were initiated by him, he's equally alive. We saw he never died. He's with us all the time. He's not only internally with us, externally too. But you have a perfect living master, and you meditate regularly, do your homework, not only you manifest him inside, later on you can see him beside you. You can drive your car and he sits next to you. You can be walking and he's walking with you. Whether you say that your imagination becomes so realistic or what, whatever happens, you are never alone, always with your master. And what great company to be with somebody who loves you unconditionally. Somebody who never judges you. Somebody whose sense of humor is better than any humorist that you can find. Who cracks jokes with you. What a wonderful life. Who can fly with you together. Who can walk with you together. Talk with you together. When you say, I walk and I talk with the master, it should be real. It not just be a prayer. It should be real. That you should be able to walk and talk with your master. That only happens if the radiant form of the master, the inner form of the master is manifest in you. And that happens, he manifests himself at the time of initiation at that very moment. Initiation by a perfect living master is not a method to teach you how to meditate. Anybody can do that. A perfect living master does not come to teach us anything. He comes to take us back home. But it teaches us because we like to be taught. Our mind wants to be taught. Therefore, it teaches. He goes along with us. Every step we take towards realization, he goes along with us at that every step and acts as if that is the most important step, including learning, including putting effort, including meditating. All these things he does along with us because that's what we think we need. We have to bypass the mind somehow 
and very often we have to go along with the mind till the mind realizes it's a game going on and i am being bypassed it's a trick being played on me our own mind begins to say that and then we realize that masters come only to love us and through the power of love pull us back to our true home because the love does not come in the region of the mind at all it comes from beyond so that is why one man i remember master was standing outside the door of his house he had just come out was standing there some of us were standing around with the hands folded which was customary there and a man full of dust on his clothes carrying a little not a bag but a but a piece of cloth tied up with with his belongings held on his shoulder came running and he dropped the bag and ran to the master and said give me initiation give me naam that man had come from a very far off village he had no money to travel by bus or by train he walked all the way for almost a month he walked the month he had heard and he had a dream that he had seen that master he had a dream and people told him that's not a dream you have seen the master he is calling you therefore he left home and after one month trudging along every day carrying a little bit of food in his little bundle which was a piece of cloth he reached there dropped the cloth and fell at the feet of the master please <coughs> first time he has come to dera what does master say when he said give me initiation master says what once again very first thing oh then master caught up he said, oh i mean you were initiated a month ago when you left your house oh formality i can do tomorrow morning what we think is initiation is a formality is a formality for the mind for the mind to accept yes we have got something the initiation is an internal process initiation takes place behind the eyes at the 10th door and the master manifests himself and takes responsibility for us that's called initiation initiation not set of words not some method of teaching initiation is a friend who is having consciousness of totality when he is in front of us as a human being and takes responsibility to take us back home that's initiation the rest is a formality and we do it just to get, get to know mind and body except just now we are initiated the initiation great master used to say when he says to a person okay that's a decision i accept you in this session the teaching of how to meditate and so on anybody who do sometimes you let somebody else do it and you would just initiate a person say okay teach him the method to do simran to repeat words to do this that's just a mechanical thing so don't underestimate initiation initiation does so many things nothing else can do we are all bound down by the law of karma law of cause and effect laws of doing actions which can be good or bad and good actions give rewards bad actions give punishment and you can't get out of the system because nothing cancels everything you do good today you get a reward you bad tomorrow punished you do good again reward again it doesn't cancel the bad that you have done in the middle so that's the system by which this whole life we are running that we have reward and punishment continuously going on because of this law and we have done so much of this collection of intentions bad and good intentions we have a huge reservoir of it we could create a million lifetimes out of the reservoir we have already created and that's called sinchit karma or the karma that's held in reserve supposing we lead a karma free life or going with the flow not creating any new karma there's plenty to be picked up by the laws of this creation that to create a new life for us from the old karma there's so much of it and yet at the time of initiation the entire sanchit karma the reserve karma from which any future life can be created is destroyed it's a very big event in terms of how this world is running and how the law of karma is operating to create lifetime after lifetime of experiences initiation by a perfect living master the greatest event to destroy all that reservoir 
and if you have to come again it will only be based on the karma of this life and no past life it's a very big change so initiation is a very big event according to me it's the greatest event that can happen in one's life and i think that is why i forget my wedding day i forget my birthday of course my wife <laughs> you you know what happens when you forget your wedding day i mean we make so much fun of marriages you know it's amazing the other day i read an interesting story of a man who went to a wizard there are wizards also wizards have long beards and very wise and they can remove curses the man went to the wizard and he said i have a curse upon me can you remove it the wizard said if you can remember the exact words of the curse then i can remove it man said i do remember say what were the words of the curse which you want now to get removed his he said the words were i now i now proclaim you man and wife <laughs> we make fun of these things i do say that marriage is a very convenient method of speedy payment of karma <laughs> there are institutions built into the system here which we can make use of therefore when i say that these are matters which we should have sense of humor when we meditate we should not have a serious face we should have a face of smile it's something to be amused with something to be enjoyed something it's an entertainment this life is entertainment inner experience is entertainment why should we make a serious face we should be laughing all the time enjoying some people are laughing all the time inside and we can see from their face how happy they are some even laugh outside and we call them mastanas we used to have a couple of mastanas in the dera and they would laugh and dance and i was very happy to find one mastana here in california in fact is sitting right here <laughs> every time i saw he was laughing and dancing so i said this is wonderful because when you have that kind of experiences inside it automatically makes you laugh and be happy and be on top of the world the spiritual path is not to make you somber and serious and say no i have to leave the world and go somewhere no it makes you enjoy the world it makes you rise above the world it makes you look at the world like a show and then you cheerfully leave when you want and go back home that's the promise of these perfect living masters when they initiate us and say we'll take you back home i give you great masters blessings today on this great day and have all enjoy the blessings for the rest of the day also and soak in all the generous blessing that are being spread today the grace that is spreading today i can watch it flowing it's like a big rainfall flowing keep your cups of attention in that direction no matter how much the rain shower comes if your cup is turned upside down it won't get filled up if your cup of attention is still outside it won't get filled up turn it inward it will get filled up very quickly turn the cup of your attention inward so the rain that is coming fills it up quickly and take advantage of this special day today and i'll be very happy to meet you once again next year on the same second of april thank you very much god bless you great master bless you